Hello and a very, very happy Easter to you. I hope um, if you are watching this, wherever you are, that today, despite the circumstances, will bring you some peace and hope and joy. First, a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came in to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have laid him. Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple ran out, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. The other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. For as yet they didn't understand the scripture, he must rise from the dead. The disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was him. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing he was the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me, where have you laid him? I'll take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go tell my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Well, I wonder if given a choice and you had to decide on one, what would be your favourite time of the year? Maybe it's quite tricky for you to decide. I'm sure some of you have heard me say before that Easter is my most favourite time of year. I love this festival season. The absolute enormity of what Jesus did on that first Easter blows me away every year. And I can't deny that I have shed a few tears this Monday, Thursday and Good Friday again. It really does still affect me. It may seem strange to you, as most people I expect would say Christmas or their birthdays are their most favourite time of year. So why is mine Easter? As I said, the message of Easter never ceases to amaze me. When I was about three years old, mum and dad were in a church drama group. Well, this particular year, they were doing a dance and dramatic reinterpretation to a song called My Song is Love Unknown. My dad played the part of Jesus. He had the long hair and everything. And when he got to the crucify, crucifixion part, I felt like a nail was going straight into my own heart. And even at a young age, I realised how it must have felt being at the foot of the cross. They were hurting someone I loved and it wasn't fair. And then as we moved from My Song is Love Unknown, the drama moved into the story of the resurrection and then came the joy when I could go and hug my dad and see that he was in fact very much alive. It was such an overwhelming experience and one 41 years later that still stuck with me. And that's what, that what I saw 
really did resonate as how those first disciples would have felt about Jesus. And then a few weeks ago, I was given the film Ben-Hur to watch. It's a bit before my time, I have to say, and it's really, really long, about four hours. But if you do get the opportunity, please do watch it and stick it out. And I have to confess, confess it absolutely blew me away. The story in itself is really powerful. But the fact that Jesus is very subtly in the movie was amazing. But not just that, it's the way that you never see Jesus's face, but you can see the transforming effect he has on those he met. And it really was fantastic. Back to the present day. And like most people, we can only we have only been meeting via Zoom and I've been doing a monthly Zoom for families across the two parishes called Up For It. And this last week we did the entire Easter story via the means of playing past the parcel. You had to be there to believe it. When we got to the part of the Good Friday story, my son Daniel was telling everybody when we said, well, what, what was the cross for? Why did this have to happen? And why is it called Good Friday? And he said simply, it's good because Jesus took all our sins away from us. All the bad stuff went on the cross. And that makes it a good day. Not bad for an 11 year old. And then the younger one, Elijah, who is just five, was a little bit confused about how Jesus came back to life. He really wasn't very sure. But then he came home on Monday from school and said in the car on the journey back from Wainscott, Mummy, when Jesus came back to life, God just did it. Mummy, God just did it. He brought him back to life, just like that. Wow! And just to see the light and the joy in his eyes as the re revelation hit him was astonishing and quite emotional, I have to say. And that's why I love working with children, but actually not just children, those who are also new to the faith. The awe and wonder that they have of Jesus is phenomenal and so contagious. Some of us here, or watching this at home, some of you watching this at home, may have experienced more Easter's than we care to remember. So what will you take away afresh this Easter day. When I look at the world today, I could weep, and I do. There is so much sadness and hurt around. There's so much poverty and a lack of hope. This week, I've mainly spent making up and delivering hampers to local schools to give to the most vulnerable families in the parishes here in Strood. Hampers that were only made possible by people's amazing generosity, local to here and from the church in Kings Hill. I've also been with some other little secret helpers, leaving hearts around Strood, just like this one, with a little message attached, simply saying, this is a gift from the church, you are loved. And again, that's only been possible to people's amazing creativity and generosity. You may also see behind me some artwork, some stained glass windows, some beautiful sunflower pictures and a whole box of flowers and eggs decorated by the children and young people at Abbey Court Special School who wanted to do something for the local community to show them that they're thinking of them at this Easter time, even though we can't go into the school and they haven't been able to come down to church. People still wanting to connect with other people in creative ways. This Easter, so many people in this area know that they are loved because of other people's kindness. When I was delivering the hampers, time and time again, people would say to me, either in the homes or when I actually dropped them off to the school, the staff would say, why? Why are you doing this for us? Why are we deserving of this generosity from you? And my response, because we want to share God's love with you 
And that's what we do as Christians. We want to share God's love because he first loves us so we can love you. We may wonder this ourselves, and I know I do on a very regular basis. God loves us. God loves you and he loves me regardless of anything that we've done. And isn't that worth celebrating? And that's why I love Easter. That is the Easter message. God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that we shouldn't die, but we should have eternal life. God did it because he loved us. Last year at Lent, the children and I put the Alleluia, a special word in church that we don't say during Lent, into a box. And we were going to get it out last Easter, but we couldn't because we couldn't meet together. And some of us still can't be in church because we want to keep us safe or because we aren't near to church maybe, or maybe we're just not ready to make that step. But this year has been an amazing year. It's been extraordinary and not in a good way. It's been so, so difficult. We've lost friends and we've lost family and we've lost colleagues. It's been really tough. But we've learned so many different ways to be creative, to engage together. Who thought that we'd be sharing services like this? People have been exploring their faith for the first time and reassessing our lives because of the pandemic. We've made new friendships through difficult circumstances beyond our control. Live streaming and technology has been important for our worship and is something that we will continue to do to reach those who can't get to our church buildings or who find that difficult. Last year was very different, but Easter was still very special. I mean, why else would I be up at five o'clock in the morning to go to church if I didn't love Easter? So we can say our special word, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Jesus raised from the dead. He died because he loved us. And it's our job to share that love with others. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this amazing, amazing season of Easter. We thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus, to die for the bad stuff, for the really bad stuff that we've done and that we will do. Thank you that you did that because you love us. And we pray that you will help us to continue to share that love with those around us, those in our homes, those where we work, in our schools and in our streets and communities. We pray today for those who are struggling, who are finding this really, really tough for many different reasons, that they will feel your love surround them this Easter day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I do pray you have a really blessed Easter and may you keep safe. Take care.